Hello, I'm Samuel Jardine, a research analyst with London Politica. I'm here with a three-part series to give you an eagle-eyed overview analysing rising tensions in the melting Arctic. In part one, I'm going to give you an overview of the environmental changes and the opportunities these have created in the region. In part two, I'll look at the political implications of this, as well as the contributing factors to rising tensions. In part three, we're going to look at the factors that actually are driving tensions currently, as well as I'll present my bibliography. The Arctic is currently undergoing a rapid environmental change. In 2020, during summer, its ice cover melted back to the second lowest minimum extent on record, while unprecedentedly the birthplace of the winter sea ice, Russia's Laptev Sea, had not frozen over by late October. This follows a consistent long-term trend of warming temperatures dwindling the sea ice. Furthermore, most of the ice that is forming is younger, meaning it's weaker. The British Antarctic Survey last year revised its previous modelling so that an ice-free Arctic is now expected as quickly as 2035, rather than the previously thought 2050. In terms of wider climate change, this should be concerning. Arctic sea ice has a key role in keeping the Earth cool. Its loss, according to the Danish Meteorological Institute, will mean by default we overshoot by 0.2 degrees Celsius the 2016 Paris Climate Agreement target to limit temperature rises to below 1.5 degrees Celsius. There are, though, opportunities to be had in this new Arctic, not just economically, but also environmentally. It's led to growing interest from not just border states, but from those as far away as China, India and even Brazil. It has historically needed icebreakers and specialist ship holes to be made navigable. The insurance costs are far larger for shipping, and the icy conditions make the building and maintenance of infrastructure expensive. And while rich in resources, with the US Geological Survey estimating there are 90 billion barrels of retrievable oil and 45 billion barrels of liquid natural gas in the region, alongside large amounts of strategic minerals, these have thus far not been, due to Arctic conditions, commercially viable yet. Less and weaker sea ice by the mid-century or earlier means the Arctic becomes commercially viable as a resource zone and shipping highway. While insurance companies and the Polar Code may still mandate it, by 2050 the situation could be likely that regular vessels could in summer cross the region without needing specialist ice holes or ice breakers to accompany them. Easier navigability means insurance costs fall and infrastructure can be developed cost efficiently in the region. The big shift though will be for shipping. Rotterdam to China currently takes 48 days via the Suez Canal. This will almost be cut in half, according to analysis from Beijing and US institutions, to around 28 days as a transpolar route becomes available and the Northwest and North Sea routes become navigable all year round. Even the British government's more moderate modelling in its 2018 Arctic strategy has the journey time from East Asia to the UK cut by 12 days. The Canadian transport ship Nunavik, actually using the Arctic's Northwest Passage in 2018, found the journey to be pleasantly boring. It had no issues with ice and most importantly found the journey from Quebec to China cut down from the usual 41 days via the Panama Canal to only 26 using the Arctic route. Shorter shipping times means greater market access, higher profits or lower prices for consumers, we can hope, and is a boon for the environment. The shipping industry's contribution to pollution is around 3% of total man-made emissions, cargo ships being some of the worst polluters in the world. This pollution will be cut due to shorter journey times to reverse the globe. Because of this, the Arctic's role in global shipping is already growing. 2020 saw, according to Norway's Centre for High North Logistics, nearly a doubling of the number of cargo ships using the Arctic's northern sea route for full transit. Such a change in the region, combined with its increasing viability for commercial exploitation, is a major geopolitical shift. A former barrier has become a fast-track corridor full of opportunity, and governments and businesses will need to start thinking vertically in geographic terms if they're to take advantage.